So you have a script for me? Yes sir I do. So we're gonna follow Tony Stark who's a billionaire playboy weapons manufacturer. Oh a playboy huh? Yeah and towards the beginning of the movie this reporter Christine Everhart is really gonna challenge him on the ethics of selling weapons. Oh well that's good because sometimes when there's a playboy character in movies there's a tendency to objectify women and get kind of- And then Tony's gonna bang her. Oh he is. And then Tony's assistant Pepper is gonna call her trash and kick her out of the house. Oh my god. Yeah it's gonna be hilarious. Well okay then. So anyway Tony Tony's gonna go to Afghanistan to show off a new weapon called the Jericho to the U.S. military. Sounds like something they could do in the U.S. There's lots of weapons testing facilities. Yeah, well, they're gonna do it in Afghanistan because I need it for the story. Fair enough. So later, he's gonna be in a convoy that's gonna get attacked by terrorists. Uh-oh. And one of his own missiles is gonna blow up in his face. That's not good. And so then he's gonna be held captive by the terrorists. And he's gonna have this thing in his chest that's using a car battery to power a magnet to keep a piece of shrapnel from entering his heart. I have to say it sounds like it pinned him in a situation that's gonna be impossible to get out of. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, see the terrorists want him to build them a Jericho missile, so they give him a bunch of weapons materials and mostly leave him alone. Well, that sounds super reckless. They also leave him with the doctor guy that saved his life who's like the nicest dude. But there's a guard in the room or something, right? No, they are kind of keeping an eye on things through a security camera though. Why not have a guard in the room keeping an eye on things? Because. That works. Anyway, so since Tony Stark has a bunch of weapon building material and little to no supervision and a new best friend to help him out, he's gonna build a kind of Iron Man suit powered by a mini arc reactor. A mini arc reactor? Yeah, it's like a super powerful energy source to power the magnet so he doesn't have to carry a car battery around. Wow. Yeah, and the doctor guy is gonna be like, whoa, this thing could run your heart for like 50 lifetimes. Wait, is the thing running Tony's heart or powering it's the- It's powering the magnet. So why would that guy say that? I don't know. What a strange guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Tony's gonna kill a bunch of terrorists and there's gonna be fire and explosions. How's Tony able to see out of the suit? Well, the mask has some pretty massive eye holes. And the fires and explosions don't roast his eyeballs? They do not. Oh, fireproof eyeballs are tight. Yeah, so then Tony's gonna go back to the US and the first thing he does is go to- Go to Burger King. Well, actually, I was thinking he could go to- No, I'm telling you that the first thing he does is go to Burger King. I already cashed a check from them. Oh, it's a product placement thing. Okay, what does he get from Burger King? A cheeseburger and probably diarrhea, if we're being honest. I'll add it into the script. Probably just the cheeseburger part though. So what does he do after that? Well now he's changed and he wants to do good So he announces that his company's not gonna make weapons anymore Won't that jeopardize the entire company and cause hundreds of people to lose their jobs? Probably kind of weird that his first good act is gonna destroy hundreds of families. Whoops. Whoopsie So anyway, then Tony's gonna build himself a really good Iron Man suit Okay, and he's gonna have a hard time getting it to fly But eventually he's gonna get the hang of it and what does he do with it? Well, he goes to kill people and then accidentally blows up a US fighter jet this guy kinda sucks. Kinda. Wow, and who else is in the movie? We're also gonna have this guy, Obadiah Stane. Oh, so he's the bad guy? How could you tell? Well, his name is Obadiah Stane, so I figured he's either a bad guy or a general in the American Civil War. Well, it's the first one. That does make the most sense. So anyway, Obadiah works on building his own Iron Man type suit. So you're saying the bad guy has similar powers as the hero, but uses them for evil? Exactly. Okay, before you say anything else, I love that and I wanna do it over and over again in any movies we make. Won't that get kind of repetitive? I don't know. Well, okay then. So what else happens? Well, Obadiah can't figure out the mini arc reactor thing, so he paralyzes Tony and steals his. Uh-oh, is he gonna kill him? No, he's gonna explain his evil plan to him and then leave him for dead. Why wouldn't he just kill him, though? Because there has to be a final fight. Fair enough. So then there's gonna be a final fight. Right. And Obadiah's a really good fighter, so it's super tough for Tony. Didn't we have a whole thing where it takes Tony a while to figure out how to use the suit properly? Yeah, well, Obadiah's gonna get the hang of it immediately. Wow. Wow. So then they're gonna have a crazy public fight and Obadiah's gonna throw cars around and stuff. What's his plan here exactly? Well, I guess it's to murder Tony in a very public way and hope that solves all his problems. Doesn't seem like it would. Yeah, it's not the best plan. Huh. So anyway, Tony's gonna fly so high up that Obadiah's suit freezes and he's gonna fall all the way back down to Earth. Wow, so he dies? No, he's completely fine. How? I don't know. Fair enough. So then Tony's gonna get Pepper to overload this giant arc reactor thing so it blows up and kills Obadiah. Wouldn't that also kill Tony? It would and it should, but it won't. Very lucky. And so yeah, that's about it. Wow. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a pretty fun superhero movie. Okay. So yeah, I say let's give it a shot. I doubt it'll lead to anything huge, but we can give it a try. <laughs>